Some people love classification, and I'm one of them. But you always run into the problem of the lumper versus the splitter. Now, you may be happy calling these apples, but for me, this is a Gala, this is a Granny Smith, and this is a Fuji. Definitely a Fuji. Or maybe these three. All dogs, right? You get my point. So when it comes to the earth, if you're a lumper, you might be inclined to do what geology did for many years. Regard everything that happened in the first seven-eighths of Earth's history, a full four billion years, as one massive period of time, the Precambrian. Now this lumping is not without good reason. The Precambrian is different than the Cambrian. The Cambrian period, beginning a mere 541 million years ago, was the first time in Earth's history where we find macro fossils, fossils that are not microscopic. In other words, fossils of the familiar kind, like this ray-finned fish from the Eocene about 50 million years ago, or this reconstructed replica of a Brachiosaurus that stands outside the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. The original lived about 153 million years ago in the Jurassic period of the Mesozoic era. Still, while many of the Cambrian life forms are anything but familiar, at least their life forms, rather than the rocks, water, atmosphere, and microorganisms that pretty much constituted everything on Earth before this time. And some of those obscure Cambrian life forms evolved into the common forms of life that we're familiar with today, like fish and frogs. So you can divide time periods much more rationally when more things happened in them, and the more recent time since the Cambrian explosion saw the evolution of almost all the macroscopic life forms ever to exist on Earth, and also saw the extinction of all but one-tenth of one percent of those species. All of which gives us a lot more detail to help organize this time than everything that happened during the long preceding four billion years of Earth's history. Four billion years. Can a human being really envision such a vast expanse of time? I'm not sure, but it's an awfully long repeat of the Earth revolving around the Sun over and over and over. Trying to conceive of that unfathomable amount of time reminds me of something that the Dalai Lama once said when asked whether he could remember any of his past lives. He laughed and said, I have enough trouble remembering what I had for breakfast this morning. And he could have, but didn't add, and that's a lot more recent than four billion years. Anyway, this is the time to explain that I had set out to make the video that I described in my last video. Next time, I'll explore the Hadean in a little more detail, in particular to talk about whether the Hadean may correspond to actual physical events on Earth and in the solar system. The best laid plans of mice and men, right? And to be honest, I look at that sincere intention and I now realize it's part of what I'm talking about today. I want to talk about defining and classifying the Hadean, but I got into the geological time scale and deep time, and that's the proper context for thinking about geological time periods in general, and one thing led to another, and so here we are. My sense of order says, let's first get deep time and its organizational challenges on the table, and then get into specifics. So I'm just going to do this and get us back to the Hadean. And next time I promise no background, no broad perspectives. I will just launch into what I hope are the fascinating observations I want to make about defining the Hadean Eon and what that means. So thank you for bearing with me and I hope it will all have been worth it. All right, so the Cambrian period starts 541 million years ago. The Cambrian explosion, all of a sudden, 
Huge numbers of new life forms appear in the fossil record. But what about the four billion years that came before that? Those billions are organized this way in our current geological time scale. What you see here is the history of the Earth laid out on this pie chart. The large sections of blue, red, and lime represent the 87% of Earth's history that occurred before the Cambrian period. And these many small sections, starting with the Cambrian, are the many different periods that make up the Phanerozoic eon, the current geological eon. Don't worry, we're still headed toward the Hadean eventually. But in contrast to the Phanerozoic, the Precambrian has few divisions. And they aren't and can't be based on the myriad fossil forms that appear and disappear in recent periods. And without fossils to mark off periods of time, classification is very difficult. In the Precambrian, we see three main divisions or eons. The large lime or green section, if you prefer, is the Proterozoic. The red is the Archean, and the blue, our destination, is the Hadean. Each of these has features that are used as a rational basis for separating them from one another. For example, the almost two billion years of the Proterozoic are associated with the appearance of free oxygen in the atmosphere and the eon extends to just before the appearance of macroscopic life forms in the Cambrian, which do not appear in fossils in the Proterozoic. The red section is the Archean, named by this guy, James Dwight Dana, in the 19th century. And I was just as surprised as you'll be to learn that this achievement is not recognized on his Wikipedia page. But I attribute that to two factors. First, he made a lot of other important contributions in the areas of geology, zoology, and volcanoes. And second, not everyone is as fascinated and obsessed with classification as I am, and so for many people, this naming achievement may just be a footnote in the history of the geological timescale. The Archean, one and a half billion years of time. As I described in a previous video, the Archean is seen as beginning when the Earth became a cool, settled planet with a cool surface under oceans and atmosphere, with a hot, active interior mantle and core. The Archean is often conceived of as the first time that Earth had cooled sufficiently to allow the persistence of surface rock formations and the beginnings of continents. Going back further in time, Back to the very beginning of the planet, we come to the Hadean Eon. That's the blue in the timescale pie chart, the first and earliest period in Earth's long history. In a previous video on the Hadean, we talked about its name, Hadean, which comes from Hades, the Greek underworld, the world of the dead, and the fact that the Hadean may correspond considerably to a traditional Christian view of hell. The term was coined in 1972 by this guy, Preston Cloud. And even though he too was a pioneering scientist in paleontology and other disciplines, his invention of the term Hadean is acknowledged in his Wikipedia page. And in fact, while we're on the subject, and let's face it, we're not on the subject of this man nearly as often as we'd like, so let's take full advantage to acknowledge Preston Cloud's perceptive prescience in his comments in 1978, when he wrote in talking about human resources and human population growth, the quantities involved, and he's talking about the resources needed by human beings, have become so large, and the doubling times, and he's talking about the doubling of population, the doubling times so short, that the lead time for action between the perception of a threatening situation and the onset of crisis or even catastrophe has become dangerously short. We can appreciate that this observation is even more relevant 40 years later. Back to our topic. And lest you're immediately going, ah, finally we're at the Hadean, I do want to show you one more thing about the classification of the earliest periods. Okay. 
Now, here is my geographical uh, time scale. Uh, wait a minute. Ah, right here. The uh, Geographical Society of America geological time scale. There's some glare there, but basically here on the right we have the Precambrian. So everything on the right represents four billion years and everything on the left three columns, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, Cenozoic, that's the last 541 million years since the Cambrian. And there's something a little funny here. If you take a look here, these eons, the Archean, Proterozoic, they do have some subdivisions. Eoarchean, 4,000 million years ago to 3,600 million years ago. Paleoarchean, 3,600 to 3,200 years ago. These are not the kind of divisions that are based on fossil evidence or anything highly specific. They're very nice round numbers. What's the basis for these divisions? Well, unfortunately, the divisions are somewhat arbitrary. And you can see that in the very round numbers assigned to the various divisions. The eons have been cut up into nice, round, even periods. There's an effort underway to ground these periods into actual events that occurred on Earth at these times. But as of today, that effort has not been broadly accepted by geologists. This is troubling to someone who likes splitting like I do. Because I don't want arbitrary splitting, I want rational splitting. Splitting that will explain something about what is actually being demarcated. We're finally there. And all of this preface about classification and lumping and splitting is not as off topic as it seems. Because what I really want to talk about is the classification of the Hadean. If you want a discussion of the Hadean in more detail, check out this recent video. In a very rough sense, the Hadean corresponds to the formation of the Earth all the way to the beginning of the Archean, the period of the first permanent continents on Earth. But I want to present the case for defining the Hadean more specifically and for grounding it more firmly in events on Earth and in the solar system that are related in important ways to Earth's history. So next time, this is a promise. No more putting deep time on Earth into perspective. No more geological time scale. But instead we will head straight to the Hadean to wrestle with how to think about and define this vital first period in Earth's history when the Earth first had formed from the material in the original solar nebula surrounding our forming Sun. No doubt we will all want to be there for that. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification button, and thanks a lot for watching.